Hey, what's up, guys? Today we're going to be working on um, a very small project that helps understand um, what an, a public API is and the purpose of it and how it's used and implemented into an application. We're going to do a very simple implementation of a public API, and that is the Chuck Norris Jokes API. So we're going to make a little Chuck Norris joke generator using the public Chuck Norris Jokes API. So if we look here, a public API, API is an application programming interface made publicly available to software developers. Open APIs are published on the internet and shared freely, allowing the owner of a network accessible service to give a universal access to customers. An API is a software intermediary that makes it possible for application programs to interact with each other and share data. It is often used regarding REST APIs that expose a specific service or software functionality while protecting the rest of the application. So we're going to uh, look into that with the Chuck Norris Jokes API. It's very simple. The instructions here show you what a request is supposed to look like. And so we have a GET request here. So when you send a GET request, you're requesting to GET data from a database. And so in the Chuck Norris Jokes API, GET request, it shows you how the request is to be structured. It has the HTTPS uh, prefix, and then the the path would be api.chucknorris.io slash joke slash random. And it tells you that that is used to retrieve a random joke in JSON format. And then it gives you an example response. So this is the JSON object that you would get as a response to your GET request. It has an icon URL, an ID, a URL, and a value. And the value is basically the joke itself. Chuck Norris cannot love. He can only not kill. Okay. So I'm here in my development folder, and I'm going to create a new folder for my project. And I'm just going to name it Chuck Norris. And then um, I'm just going to open that project folder inside of Visual Studio Code, which is my chosen IDE. You can do all of this stuff in Sublime Text or whatever you use. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm making this video kind of assuming that you're familiar with uh, Node Package Manager and Node itself. And so the first thing I'm going to do is um, initialize uh, package.json with npm init, the dash y flag, which I've covered in my last video, all that does when you add it to this command is that it takes the uh, questions that you are prompted with when you run npm init, and it gives a default answer to all of those so you don't have to sit through and like type all this stuff out. You can just put npm init dash y, and it just takes, it, it, it takes care of all of that for you. So this will initialize a package.json. And then I'm going to be using the Next.js library. And so we can go to getting started for Next.js. This is just the framework for the React framework. So it makes developing in React way faster and way more efficient. This step creates your directory and, and creates your project. I already created my directory and I already created my package.json. Now I just need to install my dependencies. So I'm going to do npm install next react and react dom. So npm I lowercase shorthand for install and then dash capital S saves and then we'll say next react and react dom so that's gonna take a minute here and while it's installing I'm gonna talk about another dependency that I'm gonna add that isn't part of this uh, instruction because it doesn't have specifically to do with next.js it has to do with making uh, API requests so it's called Axios Axios is a dependency that we use to write our requests. It'll show you an example here. Let me blow this up so it's easier to read. Performing a GET request. So you require Axios in your project, and then you uh, reference the GET, so axios.get, and then you pass it uh, the path that you're attempting to perform a GET request to. That's all I'll talk about for now. What I'll do is install it. I should have just done it with the command that I just used, but I'll do this again, npm i-s um, axios. So I'll install axios. And then while that's installing, the next instruction in the get started section for Next.js 
is to update your package.json file, update the scripts value. So you'll see in package.json that there's a scripts key. If you look here in package.json, we have scripts. And then inside of that object, there is a test key. We're not even going to use that. I'm not going to use it. So I'm just going to take these three keys inside of their script, copy them, and then just re replace this with those and save. So that's done. And then you can see in package.json also that the dependencies are listed here. We have Axios, we have Next, React, and React DOM. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier for you guys to read. That's pretty good. That's nice and legible. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is when you're using Next.js, you are required to provide a pages directory and then inside of that pages directory you have like your main file for next.js that is read so I'm gonna create pages folder in my root directory and then inside of that folder I'm gonna create an index.js so this is just the main file here and then we'll make a if you've used react then you know about uh, components and stateless functional components and whatnot. So I'm going to just create a component here, my index component. So const index arrow function. And then in the return, I'll just return a div with a paragraph tag that says hello from next JS. And then before we save that, of course, we're going to want to export this component. So export default index. So save that. Now, if we run npm run dev, which if our scripts, it says uh, the dev script runs the next command. And so we can check in here. Um, we should be able to see npm run dev starts the development server on localhost 3000. So when you run this command, it fires up the server on this port and then you are able to preview your project as you're building it by navigating to port 3000. So now if I go npm run dev, it should start the server on port 3000. And now when I go into my browser to port 3000, it should give me the content from index.js. So it should just give me a paragraph tag that says hello from next.js. And I have that right here. So the only thing I'm going to need for this uh, project, because it's so small, I'm just going to need a button that the user clicks. And that button is going to fire a request and then the content on the page that will display after you click on that button will be just a randomly generated Chuck Norris joke. So I can actually take this and instead of a paragraph tag, I can give it a heading in H3 and just say Chuck Norris fact generator. I'm going to call it fact, not jokes. <laughs> so now once I save that, it'll auto load here. And now I'm getting Chuck Norris fact generator. All right. So now what we can do is uh, we can just, we can prompt the user. We'll say, um, click the button to generate a Chuck Norris fact. And then underneath that, we can provide them with said button and then the button can just say generate Chuck Norris fact to so save that we'll go check all right doesn't look that great because there's no CSS or any styling uh, implemented but you know it has the information that we need to be uh, displayed on the page so now what we're gonna do is use you know our, our knowledge of react to create an on click handler so we'll say const handle click equals and we you know that's going to take in an event 
and then the first thing we're going to do because if you uh, click on the button its default function is going to be to just refresh the page which we don't want to do because this is a single page app so we don't want it to reload we just want the content that's being rendered to be modified we don't need the whole page to reload so we'll go event dot prevent default and now before we continue writing out our instructions for the handle click we need to bring in axios and so we can say const axios equals require axios and now we'll do a get request so to handle the on click for that button we will say axios dot get and then get needs to accept a path as its argument as we can see here axios.get slash users you know this is just an example so we'll go to the Chuck Norris API and it gives us that right here so if we just copy that paste it there then we're saying send a get request to this path which is publicly available by the Chuck Norris API. So now we're gonna be implementing something that I'm not gonna dive into really because it's its own complex topic and I don't need to really describe it too much in order to show how to implement it. You don't need a deep understanding of it and that is um, what's called a promise in JavaScript. I'm not really gonna go into what promises are. I will tell you that when you invoke a, a method or a function that is part of a promise based library it gives you access to this dot then so you can say like perform this and when you're done performing that then perform this so the dot then takes in a callback function where you instruct the program of what to do after this initial function is invoked and for that i'm just going to say return the json response that i get and so actually right now I'm not going to have it render to the page. I'm just going to make sure that it's functioning properly. So I'll log it to the console. So I'll say dot then, which takes in a response. And we can do an arrow function and say console dot log um, response. So now if I assign this handle click function as my buttons on click, on click equals handle click now when I click on the button it won't change the view of of my page but if I open up the console control shift J and I click on the button what will happen is that in the console it should log the JSON response that I get from that uh, HTTP request so there I clicked on it it took a second but it, uh, this is the response here so I've got data the object is uh, got all of these. It's got a header, a request, config. I think what we need is um, data. So if we open data up, we've got categories, created our ID. Okay, so we have value right here. This is what we need because remember the value is the actual joke. What we're going to do is reference this. So we're going to have the response dot data dot value. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna store that value in the state. We destructure React and we get use state off of it. So from React, oops, spell. And then up here, we can create our state item, which will be, um, we can just call it the response. And then, or no, you know what? We'll call it uh, we'll call it res object because we're going to be referencing just some values or one value off of that object. And we'll go set res object. Let's set that equal to use state, and then the default will be uh, an empty string. So we have that. Now all we have to do is, instead of logging to the console, the response object, we use that response object to update the res object uh, state prop. So we say, we call set 
res object and we set it to response. So now what we can do underneath this button is this paragraph tag and then we can put a JavaScript expression inside of that and reference, we can say, just so that it doesn't error out, you know what? I shouldn't have set this to an empty string. I should have set it to an empty object because its value is eventually gonna be an object. And then what we're gonna do is, so we'll say object.keys uh, res obj dot length, because it's gonna return an array. So if the dot length is greater than or equal to one, then we will return that question mark is a ternary operator. Will we return res obj, oops, response object dot data dot value. And then if it's blank, we just return an empty string. So we'll see nothing in the paragraph tag. So we save that. That should make it so that when we click on the button, our actual view is updated with the Chuck Norris fact. So I can close the development console and reload this just for safe measure. So there we go. Chuck Norris likes to go for a nap outside during all of his flights. And if I click it again, it should generate a new fact. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor doggy a bone, but when she bent over, Chuck Norris took over because Chuck had a bone of his own. Crude. Okay, so that's that. That was a very quick implementation of a public API. Just a fun little project that helps you understand making API requests. You send a get request, what you get is a response object, and then you use that object. You do this in real world applications, not just you know fun little stuff like this. This is the way that uh, re HTTP requests are performed and the responses are formatted. So if you can read the object that was uh, given to me, that object that had all of those different properties on it, if you can go through there and uh, pick out different information from there and display it or log it to the console or display it in your view, then you're off to a good start. So I encourage you to just, I picked this one because it's the most simple public API to work with. So it's a good place to learn. So I would encourage you to attempt to recreate this specific project. And then when you're done with that, I can provide some other videos on my channel where I work with public APIs that take in more information aside from just like a, a random request to generate some random data where you're actually taking in like search queries and different query parameters to get specific data from a public API, but that can come later. This is a good place to start. So practice it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was easy to understand. And if you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll try to answer them. But yeah, happy coding.